Well, awesome. We look forward to seeing that. And before we get started, if any of our students or classes out there have uh, any questions, if you could put them in our Q&A, we'll definitely try to get to as many as we can. Um, so we are going through a series um, from CAVS to CONE. Um, so the first step of creating that ice cream is calves. So how many calves do you have and how old are the calves that we see in front of us? Let's see how many calves are over here. Let's see about a hundred less than 200 somewhere in that range over here now uh, a lot of people think that cows could just grow up and start giving us milk but we start our tour, or, tour over here in the nursery barn uh, because uh, in order to give milk a cow first has to have a baby so that's why these guys are over here these girls are over here only mommies can uh, have babies and only the girls can give us milk so it's all about the girls and our breed here is a Holstein breed. Um, they're the black and white ones. And uh, we actually do have a red and white Holstein that's over there at Old McDonald's now. She was a real cutie. She just moved out recently. Uh, all these uh, babies here, they were born across the road in our maternity barn. They stay there for about a day or two. So these gals that you're looking at right here, they're about three or four days old at the most. And they stay over here um, in the nursery barn because we can take special care of them and uh, make sure that uh, that they get a nice healthy start in life. So looking at the calves, uh, we notice they have some tags in their ears. Can you tell us a little bit about what those are? Yeah, and I'll come on and jump on in with her. So the very first thing, oh, well, let me, uh, let me skip ahead to the very first thing they get before those tags. It's something very important. Mama makes a special milk. When she has these babies, for the first three days, she'll give a kind of milk called colostrum. This is what regular milk looks like. Both of these are frozen. This is what colostrum looks like. So it's, um, it's thick, it's uh, kind of gooey. It's, very, it's filled with uh, all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that a brand new baby needs to drink. And the most important thing about it, I tell everybody who uh, all these uh, adults are out there getting their vaccine shot, uh, colostrum is like a vaccine shot for the babies. Uh, it has lots and lots of antibodies in it. And uh, these babies are born without any um, uh, resistance to disease or uh, sickness. And so the antibodies in this will give them a great start at life. Within the first hour that they're born, they need to drink a half gallon of colostrum. So that's the very first thing that they get. And that's why they stay over across the road um, for at least a day so that they can get all the colostrum they need to begin with. While they're over there, they get a special ear tag. So let me come on in. You'll notice in both ears, they do have this nice bright yellow ear tag here, their earrings. And so uh, that has their number. And, uh, and also all this will go into the computer. And in that way, uh, anything that goes on with this uh, baby up until, um, you know, as she stays on the farm and grows up for years, she will, uh, all that information, um, anytime she's sick and gets medicine, when she has her own baby, all of that goes into the computer and is all um, kept uh, under her number there. So we'll be able to track her and follow her for, uh, for her whole life here on the farm. <laughs> I've got this one visiting with me back here. <laughs> also in her ear, in her left ear, you might notice, right there is this little computer chick. It's an RFID tag. And uh, here's one close up. Uh, RF is for radio frequency ID tag. This is really super important. Um, it doesn't do much while she's a calf now, but when she grows up, I'll show you a little bit of technology that we'll give to these babies. We'll sneak our way out of the bed. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So when she grows up, uh, this works in conjunction with this cool collar here. This is just like a Fitbit for cows. Uh, what it is, they'll have this collar right under their chin and uh, working along with the ID tag, uh, we'll be able to track every single movement she makes every time she's resting, walking, eating, and drinking. All of that information gets collected on the computer uh, using the RFID tag the data is then delivered we have antennas throughout all of our different barns that have a receiver on them all that data goes to the receiver and then is put into our mainframe computer so even though we have a lot of cows to keep track of this technology brings it all right down to every single individual which is really important because uh in that way 
we can uh, make sure that uh, even on the computer, uh, when they are, uh, as, say, uh, in the morning when we come in, uh, there could be an alert on the computer, like it'll say, hey, 9620 hasn't moved in 10 hours. You really need to go check on her and make sure she's feeling well. So that's really super important. So not only do we get uh, whether they're getting enough nutrition and eating and digesting their food well enough, we're also um, just getting, uh, uh, it's nice to have uh, alerts and uh, other, it's like somebody else is keeping track of your cows along with you. So it's just more eyes all on our, our uh, not on our babies because this doesn't really start working for them yet until they uh, get fitted with this across the road. But what you'll see mostly, this is our new technology, what we're phasing out over there most of our big cows are gonna be wearing this that works along with their ID tag. This is a pedometer. So this just gives us basic movement of our cows. Uh, the more a cow moves uh, as she gets older, uh, the more active she is, that gives us a, uh, a sense of um, that she's ready to be bred and uh, get ready to have a baby. Uh, and so, um, uh, that's why uh, we do need to see movement. This is really helpful, but uh, this newer one gives us all that extra information. So we're phasing these out and we're going into collars slowly and surely. And um, yeah, so I think that was it about our babies. So that's the ear tags and that, and uh, they come over here and they stay in these individual pens for about a week because they have something very important to learn while they're over here in these pens. And I can take you on down to the feed room and show you what that is. So as you're going to the feed room, um, we noticed that you mentioned uh, female cows, but do you ever have male cows on the farm? And are we seeing any of those male cows? Yes, we do have boys. Uh, when you're born a girl, you're a heifer and a boy is a bull. So we do have bulls. It's a 50-50, just like people. Uh, you can have one or the other, you never know which. And um, so uh, our boys, actually, we have a beef operation on the farm as well, North Harbor Beef Company. And uh, so our boys will join the beef herd. And we do have one little guy over here. He's uh, Angus. We have Angus and Wegu. And uh, so this little guy, he's in the back here. You can see his ear tag is different. He does not have the RFID computer chip and he has his own special little ear tags over there. So uh, he was born kind of early. So we're just keeping him in here with our girls and uh, making sure that uh, he's healthy before he can join our beef herd. So yeah, we do have uh, boys are born, uh, but they will go down and uh, join, join the rest of the beefers. So, uh, but he's too small. And as we're looking at the calves, um, we, one of our questions that our students had was, do the ear tags um, hurt when they, you put them in? No, not at all. And actually, if any of you guys have earrings in, it's a little bit of an ouch right at the beginning. And then after that, if they have cartilage in their ear, just like we do. So it hurts for just a little bit. And then once it's in, it's in. So they're, uh, they're good to go. But yeah, just, just the beginning little one is a bit of a pinch. So, all right, well, we're jumping in our feed room here. So our babies first come across the road and they do get a nice big bottle twice a day of warm milk. What we put in here is powdered milk to start with when they're on the bottle. Um, and uh, that's just so that we can get the temperature exactly right. We can mix it up perfectly and we know exactly what they're drinking. So they get a bottle uh, right off the bat twice a day, but the thing they gotta get used to is this crazy little nipple that goes on the top. This kind of feels a little funny and rubbery to them. So they gotta get the hang of drinking from this nipple. Once they can do that, they can graduate on up to the nipple bucket. Here's the nipple at the bottom. We fill it up with a lot of nice warm milk and it hangs on their pen. So they can help themselves to drinking what's in this bucket. But the problem with the system of bottles and buckets is that our calves are always waiting for us to feed them. They're on our schedule. What we really want is for the calves to be on their own schedule and feed themselves. It's more natural for them. And so follow me right out here because I saw we have some wonderful customers customers showing you what they have learned. Here they are. You can see we have nipples coming right out of the wall there. And little 9602, that's the one who did it last time too. <laughs> and 9601, one and two are showing you what they have learned while they were over in the individual pens. They can come and help themselves to as much milk as they want to drink as often as they want, which is a lot more natural uh, feeding for them. You can see, oh, 
hey, you could, they have sharing trouble over here at nursery school. <laughs> There are two nipples there, you guys. You can take your turn. So there they go, drinking away. And if you follow me back into the feed room, I can show you those nipples on the wall are coming right out of here. They're attached to a couple of tubes. You can actually see the milk going up and down in them as they drink. And the tubes are coming into this barrel. And if you look down in there, there is, whoops, I'm taking the tubes out. Here they go, guys. They can, uh, that is fresh milk from across the road. We pasteurize it ourselves, and they can drink all the way down to the bottom. By the end of the day, they'll have this all drunk down and then we will uh, clean it out and bring more fresh milk from across the road for them. So they can drink whenever they want, how often they want. And let me just make sure this still comes down to the bottom there. There we go. And they're really going to town. So now they can be together. And this is, oh, now we have uh, quite a few. Oh, it's getting busy over here. It must be uh, afternoon time, right? <laughs> so now this is important. They can come out of the individual pen and they can be together in a group. And that's really important because cows are herd animals and uh, they feel safer and uh, content when they're here in a group. And uh, so this is what we are uh, working for is uh, because, you know, dairy farming does have a sad story start. And that's that um, the babies and the mommies don't spend much time together at all. They're separated very early on. And so what our goal is to, when we bring them over here to the nursery, we want every, their, you know, basically every need met. We want them to have a clean, dry uh, place to lie down, a clean environment, uh, unlimited, <laughs> unlimited food access here. Hey, <laughs> There, there you go. I tell you these two. So um, we want to make sure that uh, that they have uh, they're safe, content, and taken care of. And in that way, they really uh, not being with mom is um, is not an issue for them uh, really at all because they are so well taken care of, and they do have friends. <laughs> And the, aren't those, oh my goodness. So really they, uh, being in a herd really uh, is, is what they want um, and, uh, and to have um, all this care and attention and, and it's one of the best starts they can have in life. And this leads to uh, healthy grownups if you can start with a healthy calf. So this is what nursery school is all about. And there's a lot going on in kindergarten. We can head that way and see what those barns look like if there aren't any other questions. Um, we do have a question. Uh, I think it's a great, great question from Melinda, and she wants to know how long do mothers make colostrum? Oh, that's a, that is a great question. It's about three days. So we will milk mom away. That milk doesn't go into our um, uh, into our trucks. It doesn't go off the farm. We'll keep that here and uh, feed that to our cows. And so, yeah, about three days, and then her milk uh, turns that white color that we're all used to. And, uh, and she can join the uh, milking string. Uh, her milk will then start going into, into the tank. We have another great question from Keely and she wants to know what's the difference between a beef and a dairy cow? Oh, let's see. Well, there's quite a few and they're different breeds uh, completely. Uh, dairy cows, they are uh, sort of, they've been bred for uh, uh, hundreds of years to uh, be high producers of milk, whereas beef cattle have more uh, musculature. Uh, they're different because they do have a different purpose. They're, you know, for eating. <laughs> so, so their whole body composition and, um, and uh, muscle growth and that kind of stuff is all, is a completely different focus rather than what we have for our dairy cows. And how long are cows pregnant? They are just like people, nine months, nine months. They, uh, cows will, let's see, milk for 10 months out of the year. During that time, within the first uh, two to three months, they get pregnant again, actually. And then uh, at the end of their 10 month milking cycle, they take a two month vacation where they are in the maternity barn, which we'll go to on our next series. They're in there and um, they have a nice little vacation where the milk in their body goes dry for those last two months. That's why they're called dry cows. And, um, and then after that two months, they'll have their baby again and the whole cycle will start all over. Um, Sue wants to know how many babies can you have in one day? 
Oh, that's great. Okay, so the math is this. We milk 1,200 cows on our farm. And as we've learned, you got to have a baby in order to produce milk. So that means 1,200 babies are born throughout the year. And when you do the math, that's about three brand new happy birthday babies every day on our farm. And do cows only have one um, calf or do they have more calves? Oh, we can have twins. And it's uh, that's actually, we went through a whole string, string of twins like two weeks ago. It was really cool. And we had uh, babies were everywhere. It was uh, actually, we had to double up in the individual. They weren't individual pens anymore because we had to double up in the nursery barn over there because uh, we did have a few twins. Um, I personally have never seen triples, uh, but I, I think it can happen. But, um, but yeah, yeah, so they can have more than one. So I think that's it for questions. Uh, for now, we are in the kindergarten um, room, and what do the calves look like here in the kindergarten barn? Um, what are their age sizes? Yep, okay, so yes, in kindergarten, we have four different barns, uh, four different pens, excuse me, I was just doing a little cleanup over there. <laughs> <laughs> We've got four different pens. This group here is our youngest group. There can be about 24 calves in each pen. And over there, you can see we already have somebody drinking a little bit. There's three nipples for each pen. And uh, no one in this kindergarten barn is older than two months. We want our calves weaned by two months, which means they stop drinking uh, milk and they're all switched over to water. So we take, uh, that's kind of a process of a couple weeks we take uh, while we get them, uh, we dilute the milk more and more until eventually they're drinking all just water. And uh, so in here, this is our youngest batch over across the way. Those are our oldest ones over here in kindergarten. They're actually out of those nipples. They're drinking just all water. And then eventually we'll pull those nipples out of the wall and they won't have any at all. So we wanna get them right that one that's over there at our blue water uh, feeder there. We wanna make sure that um, that that's what they get used to using because we're going to on the rest of our tour today we're going to head on over to elementary school where they grow up and there's no more nipples over there and uh, and it's all about our watering stations there so you can see it's kind of nap time in kindergarten and uh, these gals they all have a lot of room to play here we uh it's been so nice and warm we have the whole barn open and uh you can see we're running around and and it's uh we think this is uh this is the system that works <laughs> for us and um, seems to keep all of our calves feeling uh pretty um happy and healthy over here so uh <laughs> you can <laughs> you can let her suck your finger and get it all nice and slobbery. There you go. So we have quite a few questions uh, about your farm. Um, can you tell us a little about the herd size, how many people work there? Um, what a, a dairy farm, uh, we, you're a larger dairy farm. So what what makes up a larger dairy farm? What's the workload? So How let's see. People? Yeah, I would. We're still a family farm. We're a century farm, actually. The Robins have been doing this for about oh six. I think we're on our sixth generation now, and um, and so we of course started very small, and we've been getting a little bigger. Uh, this is about as big as we want to get. We're milking one thousand two hundred. Uh, we've got about 3,000 head altogether on our dairy. I'm not exactly sure what we have over in the beef operation, um, but uh, this is about the size that we are comfortable with. Um, this allows us to milk three times a day. On, uh, and so, you know, every eight hours, our cows are coming in and uh, we have a double 24 parlor. And uh, so that's about the size we want. And we have a beef operation so that we don't increase our numbers in the herd, we can uh, breed our cows to uh, beef bulls, and <laughs> and that'll allow um, uh, for uh, us to uh, still get the milk out of the mama cow, but then we can um, just have uh, those animals going over to the beef operation. So that's helped us there because I think, uh, uh, yeah, 1,200 is about what we're happy with. And uh, we have 7,000 acres of crops that we grow for all of our uh, herd. And um, so some of that is for uh, cow feed. <laughs> My camera person is, <laughs> is getting attacked by one of the calves. <laughs> so, so we, uh, uh, we uh, right now we're doing first cutting hay for, um, for that'll be stored in the bunks and preserved for about five months until we crack into that again and start um, 
feeding off of that. So uh, we do grow our, our own silage and, uh, and then do a, a total mixed ration for our cows. And we'll learn all about that next week. And we're looking, as we're looking into the barn, we noticed some blue duck work uh, running across uh, the roof of the barn. Can you tell you us wanna... ab about that? Yep, that is our air circulator. It's not really a fan. Its whole purpose is to move the air from one side of the barn to the other. Uh, air movement, especially in the winter, is critical. Uh, everybody knows, uh, like uh, in a uh, even in a school, um, you know, when one kid gets the flu, they're all going to get the flu if we're not vaccinated. And so uh, keeping the air moving just keeps the environment healthier for our cows. So this is, uh, we have two of those uh, in this barn. And it really does, uh, without direct, it doesn't directly blow on them. It just makes sure to circulate all the air. So that's really important. Oh, and another thing, here we are. Actually, uh, right in front of us is the sweet feed that we give to our calves. Not only do they get milk, but they uh, get this nice sweet feed, which is exactly like a, a granola bar all crunched up. <laughs> this one's really giving us a run for our money here. So uh, you can get a handful of them and show. So, oh, now she's gonna go and drink. She's all excited. So um, there's barley, oats, corn. You can see all that mixed in there. It's a really nice starter for calves. We want to get them uh, interested in eating and not only drinking because uh, calves are really cool. When they are first born, their stomachs are just like ours. There's only one part to those stomachs. And uh, as they grow though, uh, their stomachs change, whereas ours stay the same. They'll get four uh, compartments to their uh, tummy and that'll allow them to eat some of the uh, forages and grasses that we certainly can't eat. It's a diet that we uh, wouldn't be able to digest. So at this age right now, they're kind of like us, but if you follow me, let's go find our oldest girls, which I think are on this side over here. Oh, and it looks like they've eaten all of their hay. We got to get some of this in there. So um, over here now, uh, they are, um, as you can see, actually, if you want to come on in the feed room here, you can see the difference already in the two barrels. This barrel has the milk in it. This one, all clear, where they're still drinking from nipples, but it's only water at this point for them. And so their grain as well is changing over to being a little bit more boring. It's not as sweet and as exciting, because these girls are on their way to becoming real uh, ruminant animals. And so, uh, and you can see a lot of them when they're resting. If we want to look at 9478 lying down, you might want to get close. You can see she is chewing away. It looks like she's chewing on a big wad of bubble gum over there on the side. And so are her buddies. Um, they are now ruminating. So it's kind of exciting. They've grown up and... Uh, <laughs> Cows are really cool. Uh, it's an evolutionary. Th oh, there they go now. <laughs> it's an evolutionary thing where that uh, they learned that the saber-toothed tiger wouldn't eat them if they ate a whole lot of food and then go went away to a quiet place and lied down. And that's where they then would digest their food. So cows, they have uh, these stomachs where it allows them to eat a whole lot and then they'll go lie down. And then from uh, one part of their stomach, they'll bring up a ball of food and uh, they'll kind of double chew it, I guess you can say. They bring up a ball of cud and they'll chew it a whole lot and then swallow it again. So uh, that's called rumination, which we don't do as people. And uh, cows, uh, it's a great way uh, to digest the cellulose and grasses that are so hard uh, to digest. So it takes about eight hours a day for them to eat all those grasses. Well, we have many great questions as we're heading over to the elementary barn and oh, leaving. And we can go right out that way. Kindergarten barn. Um, a, a great question is we're seeing a lot of personalities in your cows. Um, <laughs> and our students want to know if they ever get angry at each other or um, not get along. Well, they do get pushy. Uh, nobody ever teaches them manners. And so <laughs> you might get one who really wants to be first in line when that grain is first put into the trough. Or when we come, they know they see us with the skid loader when we're bringing milk across the road. And they know it's going to be, you know, the freshest and, and the yummiest. And so uh, you might have a little pushing and shoving. Uh, they certainly don't know their manners. But um, I don't see much fighting. If you see headbutting, it's because they're playing and not because they're not getting along. 
Um, we had another great question uh, about the milk. Um, thinking of, of humans, we pasteurize and filter our milk. Um, is your milk filtered and pasteurized that you feed to the babies? Or to the it baby is cow? pasteurized. Yep, we use a, um, a, a bit of a, 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 an acid uh, that we put in there, uh, not too acidic, and we'll mix that in and uh, that'll pasteurize it for us. A lot of other farms actually will use a heat pasteurizer. Um, and that's what actually we do with our milk that Old McDonald's farm sells. Um, our milk goes to the bottling plant and then it, uh, I think it's heat pasteurized at 160 degrees for about a half hour. So that's one way you can do it. Um, but for us, we add um, a little bit of uh, um, acid to pasteurize and just make sure there isn't any, uh, you know, no pathogens in there. So, uh, but here we've arrived in elementary school. Are there any other questions? Yes, Amber has a great inference, um, especially as we're um, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, what happens when your cows get sick? Do you have to quarantine them or do they stay together? Right, we have a lot of different spots, especially across the road. We have a whole area where um, if our cows do get sick, uh, it's called uh, the sick pen. And because we know those cows are probably getting medicine, and the first thing we want to make sure is that the milk, uh, we still need to milk them, but we want to make sure that milk never goes into our tank. And so uh, we have a special area where we know those cows uh, need to be milked away. And, um, but over here, yes, we will, uh, if we see anybody, we can identify them. And we do have other places where we can move them or just be sure um, that, and to, you know, keep track of what the number is, everything is written down and put in the computer as to any kind of medicine that they take. But yeah, we do separate them out. Um, we don't really need to quarantine because, I mean, we can move them to a special pen, but in a lot of cases, it's just um, uh, things that we can treat and they can still stay within the herd. And as we're looking at the floor, um, we've moved from one barn to another. Um, do you have to take them on a tractor? Um, or how do they get from one barn to another? Right, one barn to another, we have a trailer that we can load them in and move them. But within this barn, what happens in here is our youngest ones start over way on this side. And then slowly they move from pen to pen until our oldest ones are all the way up here at the top. And uh, so they do that simply by just opening gates and we can move the animals in and out. So the first the top pen. These ladies up here are going to head on over to the um, uh, heifer barn across the road. And a heifer, again, is just a teenage cow. She doesn't become an official cow until she has her first baby. So these gals are going to be on their way to the heifer barn. Uh, in another uh, week or so, they have a little while here in this uh, pen. Uh, then we'll get this all nice and cleaned up and then this group can move up and we'll clean that pen and so on all the way down to the end. So, um, so yeah, some cows, uh, when we're going from barn to barn, that is a trailer situation, but uh, within the barn, they can just walk through open gates. And, we, and some of the students have noticed the um, white material on the floor that looked like snow, and they were wondering <laughs> what that is. No, it didn't snow. It is lime. That helps us keep um, any odors down, and it keeps things uh, nice and clean for our cows. So we go through a lot of lime over here uh, at the farm, and we go through a lot of bedding. And uh, we had that question on the last one. I, we can show you the wall of bedding a little later. But uh, yeah, cleanliness is uh, really, really important. Uh, in every pen, um, all throughout the whole uh, barn. So we're always scraping alleyways across the road. And uh, even here, we're scraping alleyways here. And uh, elementary school is kind of neat because over here, the cows get their first, uh, uh, they're using the waterers all the time and they get their first um, use of uh, these head. They got to put their head through here in order to eat the food because that goes on across the road. So all of this is sort of little bits of uh, things to introduce these things before they head to where the big cows are. And we had a question from Keith about, um, we noticed that the cows are in a barn um, and they're in pens. Um, and he wants to know, do they ever get outside? Yeah, um, our uh, barns, a lot of people actually have their heifers kept outside. But what we found, and we used to do that ourselves, we had our uh, heifers at another um, area uh, on the farm. And um, we found you just, we just can't take the best care of them uh, as we can when they're inside. Uh, we try to bring the inside 
the outside in as much as we can. It's like a sort of sitting on your back porch kind of feel. Um, the cows actually in the summertime love being inside because you'll see across the way, we've got all kinds of things to keep them uh, comfortable. You'll see that next week. Um, but uh, so we just, uh, we can keep flies off of them. We can keep their uh, line, their sleeping area cleaner and drier. Uh, we can um, observe, observe them much more closely and make sure they're all healthy. And, uh, and pathogens are much lower when we have them in here. So although uh, I know sometimes I wonder, you know, they're looking out at the beautiful grass and dandelions, but um, they're so close to it, it's, <laughs> it's practically like they really are out there. And, uh, and so we do want to try to make them as comfortable and content as we can, but we do find that we can manage manure and uh, manage, you know, outside uh, difficulties uh, much better uh, if we have them uh, inside in these barns. And I think we're getting a great close shot, which is uh, perfect for a question that we have from Ayana, who wants to know, do calves have teeth? Oh, oh my gosh, that is a great question. And we actually talk about that at uh, Old McDonald's all the time on the hayride because we feed the cows on the hayride. And I tell everybody, don't worry, they can't bite you because they have bottom front teeth, but cows don't have top front teeth. So uh, that's a wonderful question. So they really don't, uh, they, they can't bite you. They are really uh, more curious than anything when they're <laughs> when they're coming up close to see you. But uh, but yeah, great question. No top front teeth. They're big chewing. Remember, they're doing all this ruminating and double chewing. I see a bunch of ruminators in the back here. And um, so uh, they're big. Uh, the, the, the teeth that do all the real heavy duty work are those big, huge molars in the back of their mouths because they are chewing. Each ball of cud, they'll chew about 50 to 60 times. And uh, then they'll swallow and bring up another one. And it takes them, as I said, yeah, eight hours a day they spend chewing and chewing. I tell everybody they're the best baseball team ever in the dugout here because <laughs> they're just chewing away. So. And how long, Robert wants to know, how long do cows usually live? Um, and it depends actually on um, a lot of dairy cows will only uh, produce milk on a dairy farm for about uh, six to eight years. Um, they, uh, because um, a lot of people, it's sort of an economic decision you need to make. Uh, we want our cows to earn their keep. We want them uh, producing enough milk to cover the cost of their, uh, basically their room and board, I guess. And uh, some farms uh, have that cut off at a certain level <laughs> versus other ones. <laughs> and so, so, but on our farm, uh, our cows will remain on the dairy somewhere between, I would say we're more a seven to nine, I think. Uh, we try to keep our cows around. Um, uh, it, it's in our uh, best interest to uh, keep them as long as possible because, you know, this is where, the, it's what they're used to. They know all the ropes, they know the barns and, and they have their, uh, you know, favorite buddies on the farm. So um, we do try to keep them around as, as long as possible, but we also are, you know, a business. So it is an economic decision that um, every farmer makes. And Jada wants to know, do you name your cows? Uh, <laughs> I've been doing a whole lot of uh, virtual tours this past winter. Every class who takes the tour gets to uh, adopt a special class uh, calf and name it. And oh my gosh, some of the names. Actually, if you look at some of these cows, let's see if we can find one. Um, a lot of cows on their forehead will have a heart or a triangle or something like that. So there's a lot of things that kind of make them special or they'll have a pattern on the side of them that looks like a certain uh, thing like this one here is 9393. I would name her socks because she has cute little white socks on every foot and the rest of her is all black. And uh, so, yes, I actually have my own personal names for a lot of these girls. And uh, every class who's taken my tour has a special name for their own calf as well. Um, another great question from Nate is, do calves and cows have nails? Na as in fingernails and toenails? I am thinking he's um, thinking about fingernails and toenails. Oh my gosh, yes, they have hooves. And um, I think our hoof trimmer, uh, they actually every six months our milking herd uh, needs to go uh, get a pedicure. And uh, they, um, their hooves grow just like our fingernails and toenails do. And we know if uh, fingernails and toenails get too long, your shoes don't fit right. 
and fingernails, you know, all that stuff gets stuck under them if they get too long. And so we have the hoof trimmer. He's actually here today, but uh, we're not over um, that side of the road yet for this series. But um, but next week we might be checking in with the hoof trimmer if he comes back. And uh, yes, they need to get their hooves trimmed. Uh, and in that way, um, if their hooves get too long, they end up, they walk a little funny and uh, it could make them lame if we don't take care of them. So uh, yes, twice a year, they will visit with the hoof trimmer and get their hooves just right so that they can um, walk properly and uh, nice and evenly on the barn floor. And I think Keith has a great question that I'm curious about. Um, do they ever take baths? Oh, well, these guys don't necessarily, but you know what? In the middle of summer, when it gets real hot, we have water misters that are over the feed troughs and uh, they come on every 10 minutes. And eventually it kind of looks like they've taken a bath, um, but that's a cooling measure that we do for them. The kind of cows that take a lot of baths are the ones that go to the uh, county fairs and the state fair. Those calves get so cleaned up and beautiful and uh, they get all nice and uh, clipped and ready for show. So, um, so calves do take a bath, but mostly it's just the ones that you're gonna show at the fair. And a great question is, as um, calves get older and become cows, um, what, what does an average cow, dairy cow weigh? Oh, let's see, about 1,500 pounds, I think, 1,500. Um, some of the bigger ones, maybe 18 or so, but somewhere in that range in there, a little under a ton. And how much do the cows we're looking at here in elementary way? Oh, my. Hmm. Let's see, this is just a guess. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Probably three, four hundred pounds. I'd say, yep, about four. And as we go up the line, a little bit more. Um, they're ready to be bred when they reach about 800 pounds. And I think we have time for one last question. Um, and they, students want to know, um, do cows jump and look at the sky? Are they mobile? Um, or do they just kind of lay and, and move just a little bit? Oh, no, they, uh, it's kind of funny, even across the road, once our cows get milked, a lot of them will just come running and kicking and really, yeah, hopping around after when they come down the alleyway after milking. Sometimes cows just get very excited. Uh, just, they're, you know, they're young. They're just like kids. And uh, especially our calves, they were kind of, um, they weren't very lively down there in kindergarten, but kindergarten could be kind of a wild barn <laughs> every so often. And uh, They'll, um, they'll get to running so fast that they'll actually uh, just tumble over some of these gals. So yeah, cows are surprisingly agile uh, for what they look like. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us today um, on your farm. Um, Shirley, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow or next week, um, May 25th for the second part of our four part series. Um, we'll focus on health and nutrition. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for sharing your cows with us and all of our New York State students. You're welcome. Thanks for visiting the farm today, guys.